Hi, welcome to Organic Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about naming organic compounds. Specifically, we're going to look at recognizing parent chains, steps for naming organic compounds, and naming branching chains. Naming organic compounds. When carbon atoms are attached to each other in one continuous chain, the compound is called a straight-chained hydrocarbon. Compounds with branched chains are given names different from the straight chain name because they have different chemical and physical properties, where each compound is named by finding the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So consider the following compound. The full name of an organic compound is determined by modifying the name of the parent structure according to the functional groups that are attached to the parent. So obviously this is not a straight-chained hydrocarbon. There's a branch coming off. Our job here is to figure out how to name this. Steps for naming an organic compound. The first thing that you need to do is count the number of carbon atoms in the longest unbroken chain of carbon atoms that's in this parent. So I want you to stop for a moment, look at this molecule, and see if you can figure out how many carbons are in the longest continuous chain? When you think you have an answer, press play and keep going. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So, if we found the number of carbons in the longest continuous chain, you should have started at this carbon where I'm going to mark 1, and this would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So how many carbons are in this chain? There are 10 carbons. And is it saturated or unsaturated? Well, if it's saturated, there's all single bonds between the carbons in the parent chain. If it's unsaturated, you're going to see a double or triple bond. So the correct answer here is saturated because we have all single bonds between the carbon atoms in the parent chain. What ending would you use to identify the bonding in this chain? We are looking for the ending of A-N-E. The longest chain is known as the parent chain. When another hydrocarbon chain is attached to the parent chain as a branch, the branching hydrocarbon chain is named by attaching the suffix Y-L to the prefix. This indicates how many carbon atoms the group contains. All hydrocarbon chains branching off the parent chain must be named. That's very, very important. So if there's one carbon branching off the parent chain, we call it meth. And then we add on the YL ending for methyl. If there was two carbons involved in the branching chain, it'd be ethyl. If there was three carbons involved in the branch, it'd be propyl which is, that's really where I would stop in this course, but could you have a butyl, pentyl, hexyl, heptyl, or octyl? Sure, you could, but for the sake of this course, we're going to focus on branching chains that most likely will range from one carbon to three carbons at the very maximum. The next thing that you want to do is to count the number of carbon atoms branching off the main chain. So start counting at the end of the parent chain closest to the point at which the branch comes off. So where's the branch? Well, this is the branch right here. That's the branch. And if you remember beforehand, I started counting the carbons where the, this was carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I had gone in the other direction and I started counting the number of carbons down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'd need to make a decision. And really, when you label these branching chains, you want the number coming off the parent to be the lowest number possible, which is why we're going to go with the five here and not the six. The next thing that I want to do is figure out how many carbons are found in the branching chain. Well, there is one, two, three carbons in this branching chain. Then we ask ourselves the question, what is the prefix that you would use to represent this chain? 
Well, there's three carbons, so meth eth prop, we want to use the word propyl. Prop. So there's prop, and then a Y L to indicate that it is a branch off the parent chain. To indicate where the hydrocarbon chain branch occurs on the parent chain, the number of the carbon atom in the parent chain where the branch is attached must be stated in the compound's name. State the compound's name using all of the above information. So the full compound name would be 5-propyl-decane because the 5 right here tells me where that branching chain is coming off the parent chain. The propyl is telling me that A, it's a branch, and that involves three carbons. And then the decane tells me how many carbons are in the parent chain, along with that it is a saturated hydrocarbon. Situation where there's more than one branch on a parent chain. If more than one branch exists, start numbering the carbons on the parent chain closest to the first branch. Okay, so a couple of things to note here. First, I have a couple of branches on my parent chain. I am using a condensed structural formula for my branches just to keep things from getting out of control. Also, for my parent chain for this video, I am just highlighting the carbons. Now, yes, there should be hydrogens completely around these carbons. But for the sake of simplicity and to keep it neat and focused and to be able to see the numbers, I am not including the hydrogens. On your homeworks, you absolutely, unless your teacher tells you otherwise, should include the hydrogens on that parent chain. So the question here is, which end do we start counting on to number our parent chain? Should we go from left to right or from right to left? Now. If you said we should start numbering from right to left, you are correct because we want our branches to have the lowest possible number on the parent chain that we can. So this would be carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are dealing with octane here. And then we know that this is a methyl group and this is a methyl group. So we're gonna have a dimethyl. So when we do this and we name this, this will be two comma five dimethyl octane. Two five dimethyl octane is the whole name of this particular compound. Situations where more than one branch comes off the same carbon on the parent chain. If two branches occur off the same carbon atom on the parent chain, repeat the number of that carbon twice and place the prefix di in front of the branching chain's name. Okay, so let's look at the molecule on our left. So this is my left and this is my right. And I want to figure out which direction I need to start counting on my parent chain. And if you look at this molecule and you'll say, well, Dr. English, it doesn't matter, you would be correct. So we're gonna label this carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So automatically we know that this is heptane. Now, we have two branches coming off of this parent chain. We have a methyl group up here, so I'm going to label this one methyl, and down here we have the condensed structural formula of an ethyl branch. Now, when we name this, we have to decide which branch is coming first, the methyl or the ethyl, and we know that we should name these alphabetically. So the full name of this compound would be 4-ethyl-4-methyl-heptane. 4-ethyl-4-methyl-heptane. Let's look at our next example. Okay, again, this is my left and this is my right. And as stated before, if in this case, it's not really going to matter which end we start numbering from, or we could do from top to bottom if we really wanted to. 
but I'm going to label this carbon one, two, three. So I'm going to identify that as the parent chain. I have a methyl group above, I have a methyl group below. So when I name this, I have two methyl groups. So instead of saying methyl, methyl, I am going to say two comma two di methyl propane. 2,2-dimethylpropane because I have a methyl group attached above the parent chain and a methyl group attached below the parent chain. Now let's look at these situations and start with the compound on our left. So this is my left, this is my right. If you are saying to yourself, we need to start numbering the compounds on the parent chain starting from the left to the right, you would be correct because we have more branches closer to the left-hand side of the molecule than we do the right. So if I were numbering these, I'd say this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means I have pentane. I have three methyl groups, so I would label these as 2, comma, 2, comma, 4, trimethylpentane. So again, the full name here would be 2, 2, 4, trimethyl, because there's three methyl groups, pentane, because there is five carbons in the parent chain and they're all single bonds between the carbons. Let's look at our next example. This is my left and this is my right. And if you're looking at this one and saying, well, Dr. English, we have to start numbering from the right, you would be correct. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, so we have hexane, we have a methyl group here, a methyl group here, and an ethyl group here. Now, when we're naming this one, we have two methyl groups. So those two methyl groups, ultimately, we're gonna call that dimethyl. In this branch right here, we know that we're going to call this one ethyl. So which one comes first? You might argue, well, it's di. D comes before E. But when you're getting specific here, it's the name of the branch that we're really focused on in terms of order. So ethyl will come before methyl. So when we're writing out the full name of this particular molecule, it's going to be 3-ethyl-2-2-dimethylhexane. 3-ethyl-2-2-dimethyl hexane. And again, your teacher might have a different way of doing this. You should always follow what your teacher wants you to do. But for my particular students, this is what I would like you to do in my class. So what did you learn? We talked about how to recognize parent chains. We went through the steps for naming organic compounds. And then we talked in detail with a lot of examples about how to name branching chains. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.